What up friends? Liron here, thank you for joining me in another video and today I want to do something really fun. Um, so yesterday I published the whole fun cool video of me walking around trying to get a mic failing at it miserably <laughs> and then we did some sketching. I deliberately did not narrate the sketching process because I felt like you heard me talk uh, quite a bit in that video and so I said hmm let's make a separate one of me narrating with a voiceover what I'm doing, my thought process and how I approached this sketch. Okay now I just want to mention this is exactly what I talk about in my course. Spontaneous sketching is something I find that I really enjoy. Um, I think that it's something I'm naturally gifted with, especially with buildings and sort of inorganic shapes. It's something that I really enjoy sketching. And so the course itself talks about its overarching pencil, pen, whatever it is. You look at it and you sketch it. Um, so I think this is really good. And also you're the first people to hear this. Um, I will probably publish a, a, a course in the future that is specific to spontaneous sketching just because I see people's reaction to it and, and there's some kind of magic in it that I'm still not having in my watercolor work. Um, so I just wanted to let you know and I will put a link in the description box below to get the course and I really appreciate anyone who purchases it and becomes a part of this awesome group of students there. Um, and you can also ask me like anything, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know, comment or even an email. Um, and this is it, let's get into the sketch. Okay, so like most of my spontaneous sketches, usually I just look at the uh, contours line, contour lines of the object I'm sketching and starting from there, uh, I really don't have a, a really step-by-step -step method for that specifically. I do have an approach and a general mindset that I find that helps me. So in this example, I start with the outer lines of the house, um, just trying to figure out the general shape of it. And usually I'll start with the most major shape. In this example, I'm actually just sketching the house. Uh, it's not like a street scene. It's not... Uh, multiple structures, it's just this house and some trees, some of the foliage around it. Uh, so I'm just starting out from the outside and slowly building my way into the inside. Now I did have a mistake here uh, in the top part, which I will correct later on. Um, starting to add some of the trees uh, around it and you will notice one thing that really leads me um, with this process is that I try to um, not go into the very tiny details in the beginning. First I'm trying to get the overall um, structure of the, the house and just to get the proportions right. Uh, I use the first major object that I sketch as a sort of measuring stick to know where I'm going to place everything else. Okay. Now you see me building this top area of the <clears throat> of the, there's a hollow space in the front and here I'm correcting by the way my mistake I'm gonna shade it just to, <laughs> there's a, if you look at the reference image you'll notice um, the the V the upside down V is not supposed to reach all the way to the right um, so anyway there's this uh, hollow area in the center and just to convey that I indicate the three-dimensional shape uh, of the just under the window okay now I'm just adding some more details to the windows uh, in, inside that hollow area but still I'm not going into uh, too many details I'm really just throwing it out there um, just placing the window on the right already taking into account how the trees obstruct some of it um, just making sure it looks uh, good in the overall composition now uh, a very interesting thing is gonna happen you'll see when I'm starting to shade this um, you'll see how it still feels a little flat, but then when the darkest darks go in, this is where it really shines and this is what really brings out the beauty in it. So now I'm just taking care of the lower area of the sketch. I want to make sure I understand where it ends. So we have this uh, sort of wall and the gate to the, to the house. Um, it's going to be a really important component actually just to convey the, the trees, the mass of the trees because there will be some shadow that I'm indicating right now that's cast by the trees on the wall. Okay, so this is something really important um, to get in. Now I'm sort of trying to figure out where I'm going to continue from here and if I forgot something. So there are a few trees in the background and it's good to create a contrast because they're going to be super dark and the building is going to be lighter. 
the sky is even uh, darker than the building in some places. And it really depends on the, the light conditions. And you've got to remember that uh, they change while you sketch. So you kind of have to remember what they were like when you started out. Uh, this is why I indicated already this uh, small triangle, triangular shape uh, of a shadow. You'll see it in a moment, but now I'm just working on the trees. Um, so I'm starting with just cross-hatching, so I'm crisscrossing lines, and then the last third layer is the actual thing that gives it the texture of the tree. I'm doing the exact same thing for this tree, however this one's going to be a little lighter, I believe. So I will just keep it to one layer of cross-hatching, and so it's just hatching, and then just indicate the shape of the foliage, okay? Um, so, and, and this one that I'm now doing is super dark. You'll see this one will get the darkest uh, almost value in this entire picture. So now it starts to get some, some value. You can start feeling how the trees are at the front. You can sort of figure out uh, what's going on. Uh, but as I shade the windows and the back and everything, you'll see it's sort of a stage where things are unclear. And this is really what I want to convey to you um, with this stage of the sketch. It's just like watercolor. There is an ugly uh, sort of... Uh, there's the triangle I was talking about, by the way. Uh, so there is an ugly stage where you're not sure where it's going. There's not enough uh, uh, range of values. You don't feel the three-dimensionality and that's okay. You have to, to fight through that phase and try and see the beauty in what you're creating until you actually get to that part, okay? A lot of it, like many times, and, I, and someone asked me actually just today uh, about how he's having a hard time to continue with his paintings because he feels like, uh, you know, when it, he, it doesn't connect the way he wants, he just gives up on them. Now, it's okay to give up on a, on a painting. The thing is, sometimes you give up too early and you could have had it, you could have made it. And it's always important to notice that you're not stopping too early. So, um, many times in watercolor and in sketches, you're going to underestimate yourself and your ability to wrap up a painting in a good way. Uh, by the way, this is the cast shadow of the tree, what I just finished there. Um, now I'm adding, again, some more darks. I'm trying to share my thoughts while also narrating a bit of the process. But, but yeah, the general idea is to understand that the final result is what matters and not... Like, the process is, of course... It's a part of it, but don't judge it by the, the way it looks like when it's still in the making. Okay, judge it when it's done. And even if it looks terrible, horrendous, <laughs> horrible when it's done, it's still okay. It's part of the learning curve. But, but you have to understand it's not going to look amazing necessarily immediately. Okay, um, so that's it. Now just adding a bit more uh, of the texture. This one I want to keep light, so I don't even do any layer of cross-hatching. I just go straight away with the scribbling and the texture. Uh, adding some of the cast shadow now and shading it. Now it does feel a little better, but still a bit flat. And the reason why is that the tree in the dead center should be darker, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. Like fully darkening it, making it almost black. It's uh, if you look at the reference, it's, uh, it has a dark red, sort of burgundy uh, color, and it's really strong. When you, if you try and take that uh, picture, put it in Photoshop, uh, desaturate it, you'll see how dark it is. Which is, by the way, a good tip. If you're unsure about the values, put it in Photoshop or any other uh, image editing software. If you don't have one, you can just, uh, and you have a smartphone, you can take a picture with the smartphone uh, and edit the picture and turn it into monochromatic. You'll usually get the same effect. So now, as you can see, I'm just getting in those final darks and it really changes the whole picture. Um, really makes some things pop, some things be sent to the back. There is a subtle shadow in the frames on the window, which I'm getting in now. Uh, as you can see, and this really makes them also pop. You can feel how they protrude uh, above the glass, okay? So it's these kinds of small things you really need to pay attention to. But if I have to kind of sum it up into one thing, it's the shape of the things you draw and their values, meaning the shape and how dark or light it is. Uh, really, that's all there is to it. Let the darks and lights guide you. If you're unsure how to simplify, if you're unsure how to approach a specific sketch, let these guide you. Now there's a, a small part with small bricks. I just wanted to get that in their texture because it looks uh, nice. 
and this is really nearly done. This very gentle shadow on the left part of the of the house, but I didn't want to overdo it. Um, so really, that's it. This sketch is done, and we can wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new about how to approach these kinds of scenes, of sketches. As I mentioned, the whole spontaneous sketching thing is something that I really notice the way people respond to and I think there is a certain magic in it and I'm trying to sort of take that and translate it into watercolor and I think the meaning behind this is to really bring something from within you and it's something that I think I'm doing really successfully in the sketches but in watercolor because I'm still learning the mechanics I'm about a year into it so uh, I still have a lot to learn I've been sketching my entire life so that's like what 20 something years um, with watercolor paintings, I'm still learning the mechanics and really once I internalize them and, and I'm able to and will be able to bring really myself out there in the creation process, it's going to be amazing. Um, and so this is it. Uh, again, as I mentioned, this is exactly what I discuss in the course. So the link is below. Check it out. I'd be really thankful if you do. And don't forget to follow me here on Instagram and on Snapchat. And I will see you again in another video tomorrow. Thank you.